I'll get this. Uh, how much is it? Uh, oh, um, there's a call. Jeff. Does it ring? OK, this way. Uh, can you go on there, please? Jeff Green coming through. Thank you. Who? This isn't the stage door. Well done, Jeff. Ah, <laughs> this is the stage door. Here you go. There's here. Here we got clearance. Right. Good luck, Sam. Thanks. Yeah, let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome Jeff Green. Thank you very much. Thanks for whistling. Roger Whittaker's in. That's very good of you. We got the tickets. Lovely round of applause. I haven't had a round of applause like that since I dropped me dinner at school. That was fantastic. <laughs> it's, it's good that we haven't got any people in the boxes because I'm trying to sort of hide my belly at the moment. You go, hey, I'm thin, and people go there. He's not. <laughs> Anyone else? This is winter fat. It's winter 1982, unfortunately. <laughs> I've got my head round getting rid of it. Anyone else got a belly? Am I the only person? <laughs> wow, the belly liberation front in. <laughs> What's the rule with bellies anyway? Where'd you put your bloody belt? That's what I want to know. <laughs> Is it underneath the belly, like young blokes, or over the top of the belly, <laughs> like old blokes? Because there's two ways, isn't there? There's bloody there and there, basically. You see these old men walking round really proud. <laughs> oh, this is trouser. <laughs> isn't it? With this 14-foot fly, which just uh, <laughs> seems to keep going and ends there. I guess when you're 90, there's just a little belt at the top of your head. <laughs> like a halo. He's 90 years of age, that man. Which one? The one looking through his flies. <laughs> for the post office to cause trouble. Have you got a pair of jeans you can get into one week but can't get into the next? Yeah. Yeah, me girlfriends. Good, because that's very interesting. <laughs> so I, have, I have a very similar pair of jeans. I'm falling apart. We're all roughly my age. 21, yeah. 21, 22. <laughs> I'm falling apart. I've got bloody belly. I wear contact lenses as well. Um, anyone else wear lenses? Am I the only person? Yeah. Less people than with the belly, isn't it, really? Because <laughs> I actually went to the opticians. The bloke tested my eyes. He said, you need glasses. And I went, all right, fair enough. He says, have you thought of lenses? I said, well, not really, because I didn't need fucking glasses, didn't I? <laughs> you stupid bastard. <laughs> Hardly sat on the couch at home going, I fancy some lenses. <laughs> why? I want to blink a lot at parties. That's why. <laughs> Silly people, what a great party this is. Is someone smoking? <laughs> Over the road? <laughs> thing is, what I know is, why did they give, like, the most short-sighted people in the world the most invisible thing known to bloody mankind? <laughs> to cure their eyesight, they're taking the piss, aren't they? He goes, there you go. What? <laughs> 70 quid's worth. <laughs> Where? <laughs> On the end of that finger. I can't see me bloody finger. <laughs> That's why I'm here. Oh, you must have dropped it. Oh, did I? <laughs> I'll never find it again. I've only got one eye. <laughs> People call you vain if you wear lenses. They don't say I wear contact lenses. They go, oh, you're just vain, you are. That's, like, so harsh. You don't go to people with hearing aids. They go, you vain bastard. <laughs> well, you want a big trumpet out your ear, mate. <laughs> you're fooling no one. <laughs> Stop showing off. Yeah. People in wheelchairs, you vain bastard. <laughs> you should be dragging yourself around. <laughs> You're out on the pool, aren't you? <laughs> Trying to look good, you vain bastard. I can see right through you, you know. Yeah, Cos I've got my lenses in, that's why. <laughs> and it is a spectator sport. You put your lenses in, 30 people gather around going, ooh, you've touched your own eyeball. <laughs> How would you do that? Got a bloody lens on the end of my finger. If I didn't hit the back of the bathroom at 400 miles an hour, put your finger right into your eye. Cos you can touch the white bit of your eye, but you can't touch the colour bit, cos it bloody hurts. And don't ever try and take your lenses out if you've taken them out already. <laughs> yes. It normally happens when you're pissed. You're scraping away at the colour. <laughs> I didn't know I had tinted lenses. <laughs> you have now, grasshopper. Oh, really? <laughs> Someone's robbed my eyes. It's getting old, you know, everyone, we're getting older. I hate getting older, you know, it normally starts, you, you know you're getting older because you think, oh, I fancy a salad. You know, you think, oh, <laughs> And then you're unplugging the telly at the end of the night. You go, oh, I'm getting old. 
every time you reach down to get something, you go, ugh. <laughs> ugh. Oh, and your hair goes from your head onto your back. It's a nightmare, isn't it? <laughs> Getting old. As well, and, and, and trying to get fit, you know, when you we used to go running. When you was like 15, you'd go running, you'd get a stitch. you think, well, that's a stitch. When you're like 30, you think, that's a heart attack. <laughs> Can you run a heart attack off? <laughs> Might have a hole in the heart, didn't know I had it. <laughs> a friend of mine said, if you want to get really fit, you should go ice skating. I went, he's a bloody liar. <laughs> if he said, if you never want to walk again, go ice skating. If you want your feet to swell to nine times their normal size. <laughs> Go ice skating. If you want bloody stumps for feet, <laughs> go ice skating. All it does is teach you to love your own shoes, ice skating, doesn't it? <laughs> it's true, there's no fun, no less. You just love the shoes that you went in with. Because you hand your shoes in, they give you these blue plastic instruments of torture. <laughs> it says, go and have some leisure with them. You're like, leisure? <laughs> I can't walk. And the weird thing is, you've got to hand your own shoes in, like you're going to nick the skates or something. <laughs> they think their skates are so comfortable, they think, I'm going to rob these and play football in them after. <laughs> What's the exit? I'm off. <laughs> no, keep my shoes. <laughs> these are brilliant. <laughs> I might file a blade off these and use them as slippers. <laughs> the hush puppies. And it's so humiliating. It's not like you get your bloody skates there and the rink's there. Oh, no. That's too easy. We want to see you hobble. The skate's there, the rink's four flaming miles away. She took these nine flights of stairs. Is it past those girls I'm trying to impress? Thought it might be. Hi. I'll catch you later. Because someone says, oh, you meet loads of girls ice skating. Well, you do, but you hardly look your best. Is it? in the middle with all blood coming out your nose. <laughs> and your front soaking wet where you fell over. <laughs> Do you want to go out after? <laughs> no, thank you, simpleton. <laughs> That's not piss. <laughs> That's water. I fell over. Not very good. I went dry slope skiing as well. I don't know if you've ever been dry slope skiing. If you've not been, don't bother going. Just get a scrubbing brush and rub it across your face. <laughs> 50 miles an hour, exactly the same. It's the most painful thing I've ever done in my life. The woman said, go from the top. I thought, I'll show her. And I must have caught a bit of a crab at the top right now. Bloody helter-skeltered all the way down. The last 50 yards on me chops. I sort of glided to the bottom. She went, did you enjoy that? It was fantastic. Anyone handed a face in? It's mine. What will it look like? Fucking terrified. Mouthing the word, some bastard pushed me. <laughs> and I wasn't ready. <laughs> Driving in the summer is very dangerous as well, for a completely different reason. Because I don't know if this is the same for women, but if you're a man and you're, you're driving in your car on your own, beautiful summer's day, there are no women about. Your girlfriend gets in the car, there are thousands, thousands of semi-naked women, and you're not allowed to look at them. You've got to sit there and look at things you've never seen before in your life. You, you know, like trees and architecture. <laughs> I see a girl walking towards you with a short skirt on, and you go, go, is that a lodge? <laughs> your girlfriend's going, I know what you're looking at, you dirty, filthy pig. I was looking at that tree. I thought I saw a beaver, a squirrel. <laughs> I thought I saw a small squirrel in that tree. You know, and women say, oh, well, you know, we don't look at men when we're driving around. Well, some do and some don't. And I say, well, we're not exactly walking around see through trousers, are we? With our testicles pushed together <laughs> by two bits of cotton wool. Thank God, we'd all be crashing. God, oh, God, look at that man over there. Is that a wonder scrotum? <laughs> I think it is. I think it's from Milan. <laughs> They're very daring, those Italians. You know, because I was trying, like, I tried to be... It's very difficult to be politically correct these days, and we are the first generation that's had to deal with this, you know. My, my father, I don't know about your dad, my dad used to do nothing round the house. He just used to sit in his chair, threatening people, basically. <laughs> <laughs> that was his job, just clipping people around the ear as they walk past and just get on with something, you know. Nowadays, you try and skive out the washing up, Claire Short comes around and tries to duff you up, doesn't she? And I'm terrible at trying to get out of stuff. I'm one of these people that gives it all, but it's who's the best for the job. And you're the best at cooking and cleaning, and I'm the best at the remote controls on the television. <laughs> and I'm the best at driving to a party, and you're the best at driving from a party. <laughs> you know, 
I never understood with sexism as well. The thing with sexism, you know, people... I, I, I understood fair pay and equal rights. I, I never understood... But I didn't understand, like, um, the sex object thing, you know, where women say, and we don't want to be thought of as sex objects. And a lot of blokes go, oh, yes, I know what you mean. But they just want to get shagged, basically, don't they? <laughs> and it doesn't help when women say, well, how would you like it if every girl you met wanted to sleep with you? <laughs> it's a toughie. <laughs> I think I'd like it a lot. <laughs> I'm really shallow. I've, I've always lived on my own, you know, that's a very... Weird. You live on your own and then suddenly, I, ever since I was 18, up until 21, and, um, 31, and, uh, <laughs> sorry, and that was that. Uh, but, but the, and I'd always lived on my own and, it's, and then my girlfriend moved in, which is a very, very strange thing, because, like, I mean, it's just a culture shock, you know. I mean, I was not used to being, like, hassled 24... Sorry, not hassled. Loved 24 hours a day. Like, <laughs> you know, joke, joke, joke. But you, it, there's so much kissing goes on when someone moves in with you. It's, it's kissing frenzy, isn't it? It's give us a kiss, give us a kiss. Didn't I give you one yesterday? <laughs> it evaporated. Well, be more careful. I'm not made of spit. <laughs> you know? And holding hands. You've got to hold hands all the time. You put your hand in your pocket, there's one there. You know? <laughs> I thought you might like to hold that. I do, I, I, I do. I like holding hands, walking down the street. I love holding hands, watching TV, very nice. Swimming, going too far, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Yes, I do love you. But you do, you learn so much, like, you look, when someone moves, or you move in with something, you learn so much about, like, I learned why uh, my girlfriend's towels always used to smell lovely, you know, when I went round to her house. And mine used to always smell of old sick. Uh, <laughs> apparently she washes hers. <laughs> I also learned that when a woman says she's run you a bath and she's put cold water in, that's a dirty, downright stinking lie. 400 degrees Celsius, that bath. <laughs> I don't know where they get the water from. It's like lava. <laughs> you do it on purpose. They've run your bath very kind of. You put cold in. Oh, yes. <laughs> waiting for that little foot to go in and go, ah! Got him. <laughs> Have you ever put a foot in a bath that is so hot you can't actually work out if it's too hot or too cold? <laughs> That's the baths they specialise in. You put your foot in and go, there's something wrong with this bath. <laughs> is that my skin? Jesus Christ! Have to put your foot in the toilet. <laughs> Only available cold water in the area. And they say women are the weaker sex. Have you ever tried getting a duvet off one at four o'clock in the morning? <laughs> it's impossible, isn't it? <sighs> you couldn't get a pickle jar open a few hours ago. <laughs> Give us that, I'm freezing. <laughs> My ass is blue. <laughs> I've got the strength of ten men. You want steroids? <laughs> I knew it. I wondered where the beard come from. <laughs> you ever had that where your parents ask you if you've ever taken drugs? You know, my mother said, have you ever taken drugs, Jeff? And I went, well, yes. And she just went, ooh, and started crying. And she said, well, what have you taken? I went, well, cannabis. And she hit the floor. I went, I think I'd better leave it there, really. <laughs> <laughs> wake up, wake up. I haven't finished. Cannabis. <laughs> Get your pen out. <laughs> but take, everybody worries when you take acid that they think you can fly, you know. And it's rubbish, you know, you, you can't fly. But it makes you very suggestive to ideas. So might, you'll be at a party, you'll be on acid, you'll be looking at, like, the traffic lights out the window, having a bloody good evening, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> and somebody at the back of the room will say, hey, don't try and fly. Now there's a thought. <laughs> Why not? I've got me magic Wellingtons on. Icarus did it, I can do it. Because I always think about, like, Cat Stevens. Everybody takes the piss out of Cat Stevens. And I think that's so unfair, because, like, he's been a Muslim for 18 years, and all these hippies in the 70s, didn't they? They flirted with exotic religions, like, sort of, Hinduism and Buddhism and Islam. And then they stopped taking acid, and it went. Which makes me think, 18 years, how strong was the acid Cat Stevens had? <laughs> it must have been A4 size, mustn't it? <laughs> oh, the trip of his life. It must have gone, huh? Imagine one day he's going to wake up and go, cool, what a party. <laughs> What's this I'm wearing? <laughs> I'm called what? <laughs> How is Matthew and Son doing? <laughs> I don't worry about people taking drugs. I think, I, think you, I think you should maybe take them a little bit older than people do. But I just I worry about dogs, you know? People, they make dogs find drugs, and that is so unfair. How do you make a dog find LSD? You know, it's a little piece of paper. And you spray it with lysergic acid and, and you put it in your mouth and it absorbs in your bloodstream, apparently. And um, <laughs> uh, 
you've got to be so careful with the dog, surely. You go, right, boy, I want you to go and find these... Oh, he's only bloody licked it. <laughs> oh, shit! I'd keep an eye on that dog if I was you. About 40 minutes, he's going to want to change his name. <laughs> for Rexter, shaman. <laughs> and he's out the kennel, living in a wigwam. <laughs> eating lentil soup and stroking the cat off his head. <laughs> no collar anymore. Beads. <laughs> Chilling. Get your own stick. <laughs> Actually, my, my favourite drug, well, really, is, um, is, is alcohol. Because um, the thing with alcohol I don't like is, um, is I don't like the way it sort of... It drip-feeds your memory back to you the next day, alcohol. <laughs> what do you do without that? You sort of wake up. It's normally when you sort of reach the shower, you go, Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my good God. <laughs> you know, you never, it never tells your interest in you were alcohol, does it? You never sort of wake up and think, You were an asset to that party. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing how much you know on drink. You had Rwanda, Ireland, Bosnia, all sorted out. Well done. <laughs> you wake up and think, oh, I never got my dick out, did I? <laughs> no! What is the chemical in alcohol which makes you go, something philosophical and this? taking with Kodak Advantix cameras is really that simple and a great gift for Christmas from just $29.99. That the latest dance, Grace? No, they're just trying to get off the sofa. This year, WH Smith are making a really big deal of Christmas with huge deals on CDs like Five's Greatest Hits for only $9.99. Make a big deal of Christmas. W.H. Smith. Spend £15 or more on selected cosmetic brands and get a spectacular silver jewellery set free. Great gift ideas, great offers, now available at Boots. What have you got there? Sack jacks. They are gorgeous. And less than 10% mm. fat. Can't have just one, though. Uh -oh. Snack jacks. Too good to keep to yourself. Just three steps, the heavenly smell of freshly baked bread in less than an hour. The bread maker from Kenwood, making great food simple. Get just enough education to perform by Stereophonics at Virgin Mega Stores this Christmas. Includes the singles Have a Nice Day, Mr. Writer, Step on My Old Size Nines, and Handbags and Glad Rags. Another uplifting experience from Virgin. Just Enough Education to Perform is out now. One of hundreds of CDs in our two for £22 promotion. Virgin Mega Stores, whatever turns you on. Who's this for, Neil? My brother Phil. At Homebase, save a third on these Black & Decker power tools. 
You haven't got a brother, Phil. I'm one of seven children. I've got four, four sisters, two brothers. My dad bought himself an MG sports car once, right? Honestly, I swear, we were like, uh, nice car, where the bloody hell are we going to sit? <laughs> we had to go to school like the White Helmets motorcycle display team. We, did, we were all balanced on each other's shoulders. <laughs> My dad would be in the front, low bridge! <laughs> Man, bastard. My mother's really nice, she's like working class posh, you know. She has pot noodle, but she has it on a plate. She goes, <laughs> Mum, eat it out of the container. Hey, I've got my standards. My sisters used to really take the mickey out of my mother. They used to, like, in growing up in the 70s, they'd, they'd have all this sort of makeup, stars on their eyes, all freckly, things all glitter and stuff, and they'd blink and you'd start, you know, flashing them out. And, um, and they'd have, like, freckly glitter all over their faces. And they'd say to my mother, like, makeup, all this. They'd go, uh, I'm just off to my friend's house to do some revising. <laughs> I'll be back at dawn. My mother's always sort of hassling me for kids, you know. She's always sort of getting to the point where you reach a certain age and they're going, have children, Jeff, have children. And I mean, I, I've, I'm perfectly happy sort of not having kids. I like babies. I find babies lovely. I find them difficult to hold. That's the only thing with babies I've got a bit of a problem with. When someone's got a little baby, say, do you want to hold him? You go, oh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> you go mad in your hands. His little head keeps flipping down. <laughs> Shit, I think I've broken his neck. <laughs> it was like that when you gave it me. <laughs> I never broke that kid's neck. <laughs> oh, please don't put me in prison. <laughs> if I had a baby, do you know what I'd do? I'd stick him in a little Velcro suit, wouldn't you? I would, and I'd wear one myself. <laughs> and I'd just stick him on me like that. <laughs> That'd be perfect. You could go to the pub, pull him off, stick him on the flock wallpaper. <laughs> go and have a drink with your mates, go, yes, he's all right there. <laughs> no, he likes being upside down. <laughs> it's like an egg timer. When he goes red, it's time to go home. And if your wife was wearing a Velcro suit, you'd say, take the kid out, would you? <laughs> Be a great game on the beach, wouldn't it? The two of you, Velcro suits, catch him. <laughs> oh, bloody hell. <laughs> I don't like children when they get to about three or four, like toddly people. I don't, um, they're, they're useless, aren't they? I mean, I don't mean to be horrible, but they're crap, you know. Because, like, they're too big to pick up, but too small to send to the shop for fags. <laughs> don't they? They're in limbo. They don't know what to do with themselves. They're sort of, like, screaming on trains. That's their job, isn't it? <laughs> Even the nuns on the train are going, knock the bastard out, why don't you? <laughs> Kid's getting on my nerves. You had the orgasm. You sort him out. That's my attitude. <laughs> I like children when they get to about nine or ten, you know, when they reach about sort of that high, because, um, well, they can make a cup of coffee without killing themselves, can't they? <laughs> they can, they become useful to the family again. I've seen that where their mother says, put the kettle on, the kid goes, ooh, important. <laughs> and they go running into the kitchen and they make like three or four cups of God knows what to them. <laughs> Just copying things they've seen you do and it's all tepid and they, they bring it in on a tray and there's like too much and the concentration on their face. And... <laughs> And the little tongue sticking out because they need more room in their head to think about it, don't they? <laughs> Sweat pouring off them. <laughs> Christmas is always a pain if you've got lo loads of nephews and nieces, like I've got about 11, and, and they always want stuff, if you're their uncle, they always want stuff from you from shops, you know, at Christmas. And what do you get back from them? Things they've made themselves <laughs> in school. <laughs> Crap, basically. <laughs> You know, they want bloody roller skates off you. What do you get? Bit of old cardboard with glitter on it. Bit of cotton wool hanging off a strand. And they walk in really proud. Guess what that is? Nah. I haven't got a bloody clue, to be honest. Salvador Dali couldn't guess what that was. Where is it then? Did you drop it? No, I never dropped it. I think you'll find that's baby Jesus. <laughs> oh, will I? Yes. That's baby Jesus. Baby Jesus has not got one eye and a beard. <laughs> now, go and get your piggy bank. I know you've got money. <laughs> they give you pot porry, but it's not pot porry. It's leaves from the gutter. <laughs> Denim poured all over it. <laughs> I think you'll find that's pot porry. <laughs> oh, will I? Put your bloody Wellingtons on the right feet. I think you'll find these Wellingtons are on the right feet. <laughs> They're pointing in opposite directions. It's for child molesters. I won't be followed. I think I'll follow two one-legged dwarfs. <laughs> oh, will they? 
Wellingtons were great for one thing, standing still, weren't they? You dared move, they'd strip that sock off your foot in two strides. <laughs> you go, there's the bloody socks gone. You'd find them concertinaed around your toes, all sweaty and horrible. My friend asked me to look after his dog once for a week. He said, will you look after my dog? And I, he stitched me up like a kipper. I don't know what he fed him on before he gave him to me. <laughs> wet grass, I think. A big bowl of wet grass. He went, get that down, yeah. Look after that for us. I was in hell. Honestly, the thing did not stop farting. I live in a flat. A lot of people in London live in flats. I had nowhere to take him out to just sit there and endure it for a week. And we're like, oh, please stop it. I can't see the telly. <laughs> Stop it. You're giving me asthma. <laughs> and, and you can't put a dog on a ledge like you can a cat, you know. By Thursday, I thought, I'm going to bloody do it. Sorry, who's he going to tell? <laughs> and, um, good joke, but uh, never mind. <laughs> yeah, but I used to listen for him. I used to listen. You know, you can listen. In the end, I used to train my ear. He used to give himself away. I'd be sat there watching TV, and he'd, he'd go... <gasps> <gasps> you, know, you know when they're sort of lying? And they look like they've been dropped from an aeroplane. Um, <laughs> and you go, <sighs> and I go, cold. <laughs> and you can't mistake it. It's like there's been an explosion in a dry roasted peanut factory, <laughs> hasn't it? And it's all come into your windows. You go, oh, bloody hell. And the cheeky little bugger used to go, <sighs> and then look up to go, has somebody farted? <laughs> bloody you have. Look all around you, all my carpet singed. <laughs> Oh, no friends. <laughs> All the leaves have fallen off me plants. I felt like I couldn't tell him off. Very difficult thing to tell a dog off because, I mean, I don't think he could make the causal connection between him farting and me sort of having a go at him, you know. I could see he was in his eyes. He hadn't got a bloody clue what I was talking about. I could, Stop farting! And he'd be like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> You know, as far as he's concerned, we're all watching a bit of telly, you know. He's got a bit of a dodgy tummy, not too bad, but... And I've suddenly started picking on him for no reason. That's what he thinks. What, was it licking me bollocks? No. <laughs> Worse. Farting. It's like when a dog, you know, when you sort of... Um, when you, if, I don't, people got dogs or something? Yeah, maybe. One dog. Lovely. <laughs> One dog in London. And um, when you sort of go into your house and the dog's there and he, you've left him in the house for a little bit and, and, he, and he's really pleased to see you and you go, yeah, 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 I am important. Yeah, yeah, I, I am a bit special. What a good judge of character you are. And then, um, and he's trying to kiss your face and he's trying to lick your face and you go, get off me, get off me, don't lick me, don't lick me face. And his tongue goes right in your mouth. <laughs> it's a fluke of a shot. <laughs> right in. Right to the end of your tonsils. Gives them a bit of a lick. Pulls that out, and you manage to suck every last drop of saliva <laughs> off his tongue when he does it. It's in and out like that. You don't, it's like you're being kissed by a, 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 a snake. <laughs> and he knows he's done wrong because you can't find him for a week. Where's that fucking dog go? He's up the chimney, that. Huh? I'm not coming down. I'm not coming down until all that tongue business has been forgotten. You know, we never had bloody uh, um, Latin at school. We'd have, like, things like domestic science classes, you know? And they used to make you feel so poor. You know, you'd be in class and the teacher would say, right, today we're going to teach you how to make cheese on toast as a snack. <laughs> snack? <laughs> snack? That's not a bloody snack. That's tea. <laughs> Who's having it as a snack? Is it allowed as a snack? And she'd say, next week we're going to teach you how to iron a shirt, so bring a spare one in. Spare shirts? <laughs> What's the spare shirt? <laughs> this is it. We had enough trouble shoplifting the cheese on toast ingredients for today's <laughs> lesson. We're going to have to nick a shirt now. <laughs> Said, if you don't bring in the ingredients, we'll have to tell your mum and dad. Dad? Who's got dads? <laughs> Are you allowed dads? <laughs> We always tell the children that had stolen the stuff for domestic science classes, because, like, you know, they'd give you a recipe and, uh, and you'd have to bring it in the next week and, uh, and they'd have, like, four ounces of margarine, but you can't steal four ounces of margarine, you know, unless you go... Mm. Put it in your pocket. <laughs> right, I've got a nick of white of an egg. <laughs> Stand them up. Gather round me, gather round me. <laughs> I want to try and blow it in my top pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. We used to have a remedial class at my school as well, and I don't know if this is PC, but I, we had this remedial class, and I tell you what, I thought, I'd oh, bloody love to be in that class, I would. Do they have remedial classes in public school? 
I mean, it wouldn't be something you'd want to pay for, really, would it? You know, <laughs> 20 grand a year for him, crayoning. <laughs> Do me best. <laughs> it would. I used to look at this class and think, oh, I'd love to be in They always looked like they were having a laugh in the remedial, didn't they? <laughs> Never out that minibus, were they? It's true. You know, it's true. You'd be doing your exams, they're going, we're off canoeing. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> yes, we're all allowed to smoke and we've all shagged the teacher. <laughs> Haven't we, sir? Anyway, um, I saw this one article, um, uh, it was, um, who was the best lover in Europe? And I thought, oh, that looks interesting. I wonder, what, wonder where Britain came. Which men, which men from which country are the best in bed? And I thought, well, let's have a shufty of that then. And uh, Britain, right, Britain, right, <laughs> Britain, right. No, it'll be in here somewhere. Britain, Britain, bottom. It was, bloody bottom, below Lapland we come. <laughs> nog in the nog. And he gets his bloody kit off once a year. You know, we're bottom, British men, terrible in bed. And I thought, I was really angry. I thought, I didn't know I was shagging for England, did I? <laughs> I'd have taken my bloody socks off. <laughs> Could have known it was a competition. You would, wouldn't you? You'd, you'd comb your hair. If you thought you were going against Belgium, you know, <laughs> head to head or something, you know. All right. And, and I think British men are competitive sexually. You meet your girlfriend, you, the first few weeks of the relationship, you want her to think of you as, like, the best person she's ever been with. You know, you don't want to... Th number six, you know what I mean? <laughs> and introduced as such. You know, Hello, this is John, the sixth best lover I've ever had. <laughs> Do you remember Paul with the premature ejaculation? <laughs> number five. <laughs> You know, so you do things you shouldn't really do with your girlfriend. You want to impress her, don't you? And you, you go mad and, and, like, you know, you try and pick them up and, 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 and shag them as you go around the room, don't you? <laughs> don't you? <laughs> don't you? Because you saw it on nine and a half weeks and it looked easy. <laughs> and it isn't, is it? <laughs> oh, no. Something most men can only do for about four seconds and the knees start to call up. <laughs> and you're like, oh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You're heavier than you look, aren't you? <laughs> Eight stone, you say? <laughs> my arse. <laughs> Let go of me hair. <laughs> Let go of me hair. <laughs> it's not hinged, you know. <laughs> I'm not a bloody pogo stick. <laughs> oh, where's the condom gone? <laughs> well, get it out. I don't understand, I can't get the giblets out of the chicken, can I? Don't stand a chance, do I? You have to, you have to go to work with all them. Thank you. <laughs> so, and, and you have to go to work with all clumps of your hair. <laughs> and your boss is like, ah, what happened to you? <laughs> don't ask. <laughs> this is in a splint. <laughs> and I've been chucked. <laughs> do you want some mags? You know when you run out of KY jelly, do you think it's okay to use that stuff you get in the middle of pork pies? <laughs> no, right, <laughs> good. I'll stop doing that then. Because no, single men, you get, it's, it's sartorial in elegance to them, isn't there? You know, it's, I think it's because you've got no girlfriend at the front door saying, take the tank top off. <laughs> yeah, they're just straight out there, socks and sandals, when you go into the pub. Single women can always spot single men in pubs. They're the ones with the white T-shirts with a hint of pink, <laughs> isn't it? Where they wash to themselves with a pair of red underpants. And went, ah, sod it. And your clothes always smell of mildew because you've left them in the washing machine for three days because <laughs> you're so lazy. People sit next to you, your clothes smell. You go, piss off straight out of the washing machine, this is. <laughs> How dare you? I find that ball thing weird. You know the little ball you got put in the washing machine? Bloody mad, isn't it? It gets everywhere. I was out dancing the other night and it fell out of my trousers. <laughs> I could just sort of dance along the dance floor. Oh, crikey, that's mine. <laughs> they don't give you another one of these, you know. <laughs> you gotta look after them. <laughs> Single men trying to get it off me is going, piss off, it's mine. <laughs> There's powder in that, get your own. <laughs> you live in fear of walking into a nightclub with a square of bounce still stuck. <laughs> To the back of your T-shirt. <laughs> Dancing away and it's being caught in the ultraviolet light. And we're going, look at that knobhead over there. <laughs> they, they're all looking at me, you know. <laughs> yes. So it's a, um, they're trying to make men's, uh, men's underpants sexy at the moment as well, aren't they? Have you seen these, like, um, the all-in-one jobs you can get? 
like the pants and the T-shirt stuck together, which are, like, great for the first day. You wash them and they shrink. <laughs> You've got to, <laughs> you've got to walk around town with your testicles there. <laughs> like a brooch. <laughs> That's a nice brooch. It's actually in my testicles, to be honest. <laughs> These underpants look the crack of me bum. Because I think women buy these things. You buy these things for men. You're okay because you've got that bailout thing on your pants, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, the little popper point thing, you can just bail out your pants really quickly. <laughs> That's what it's for, isn't it? So, gonna wet me knickers? No, I'm not. <laughs> that was a close one, Tracy. <laughs> you had to put a ripcord on mine. Cut her off an action, man. <laughs> I was trying to cook as well. It's like, you know, cooking for yourself is... Sunday dinner. Oh, how they, they cook Sunday dinner. It's how do you get it all hot at the same time, you know? That's alchemy, isn't it? <laughs> it's like the peas are hot, potatoes cooked, meat's ready. If you come to my house, it's peas at six. <laughs> potatoes at midnight and meat on Tuesday. <laughs> this, you try and follow a recipe book, they're not written for men, they're written in bloody double dutch. Only all the measurements are just made up names like knob of butter. <laughs> knob of butter. What the bloody hell's a knob of butter? <laughs> you don't get them in knobs, you get them in packs. Walk into Sainsbury's, I need four knobs of butter, please. <laughs> this is stupid. <laughs> What's your one? One tabes per. Isn't it? <laughs> one tabes per. Tabes per? Tabes per? Never bloody heard of it. <laughs> Went to school, never had one tabes per. <laughs> Copper sulfate. Did you? Photographs in recipe books, they're just there to make you feel inferior, aren't they? <laughs> You're aiming for that photograph. It's beautiful. I tried to make gingerbread men once, like they had bloody cutters for theirs. I only had scissors. <laughs> Mine come out, there was heads missing, arms off, legs gone, they all had a fight in the oven. <laughs> One of them had gone mad with the heat. <laughs> Ran amok amongst his friends with a machete. <laughs> I had to make little gingerbread crutches for them to hang on to. <laughs> we were eating them on stretchers. Terrible. <laughs> and people say, cooking for yourself, cheaper. Cheaper. You go, Get off. Those gingerbread men were coming out like eight quid each. <laughs> they were eight quid each after I'd bought all the tools. <laughs> Don't tell you that, do they? I admire people that can... I really admire... Who can cook things, right? You know, you know this bit, and they cook, and it's beautiful. And everyone gathers around it, and they'll go, Oh, that looks too good to eat. And I'm there going, No one's ever said that about my food. <laughs> they normally say, Did you drop it? <laughs> no, I never bloody dropped it. That's a lemon curd casserole <laughs> with pickled onion trimmings <laughs> and a nine-inch knob of butter. <laughs> hey! My cutlery drawer is very similar to a lot of people's. You open your cutlery drawer and it's knives, forks, spoons, little spoons and then mess. <laughs> Isn't it? Sort of utensils you have never bought. You've never seen come through the front door, but you own them. It's like a mass of ironwork. You know, you can never get the bloody drawer open. You've got to get your hand behind the masher. You think, I must sort this drawer out at some point. There's like five egg white separators in there. You know, <laughs> never bought one. Where the hell they come from? <laughs> so suddenly you keep saying, I bloody buy these egg white separators. I've got one left. You know? And there's a, there's a cheese knife, you know, a little cheese knife with the hook on the end of it, which you keep for best. <laughs> you know, for best. It, actually, it's not. It's when all the other cutleries in the bowl needs washing up. <laughs> I'm going to use this today. You know it's time to do your washing up when you're eating your cornflakes with a ladle. You think? <laughs> like that. You got some washing up to do? No. <laughs> it's a spoon, isn't it? <laughs> Piss off, mind your own business. <laughs> I'm happy as I am. Thanks for listening to me. You've been fantastic. I hope you've enjoyed yourself. I've really enjoyed myself. Thanks for coming out. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Tomorrow, the world. Uh, uh, can I come, Jeff? Uh, Je Jeff, I I'll get the cab, mate. Uh, Katie! Katie! Katie!